Rachel from Seven and All, and today I am here to bring you a big history curriculum comparison video. I've done several curriculum comparison videos on my channel. I've done one for math, comparing five different math curriculums for homeschool, and you guys have always really enjoyed these and found them very helpful. I get a lot of good discussions in the comments based on these videos, so I decided to make one for history. In this video, I'll be comparing four different curriculums that we've used during our two plus decades of homeschool as a homeschool family. We'll be um, going over Abeka, Sunlight, Mystery of History, and Story of the World. So those are the four history curriculums I'll be showing you. I'm going to take you on a detailed look inside each one, talk a little bit about the pros and the cons, and kind of maybe what might make you want to choose one or what might make you not want to choose one. Um, and I'm excited about that. All of these curriculums are very age adaptable. They have either it's one level that can be used with many different ages of students or it's a curriculum that offers many, many different levels. So I love history. In the comments, raise your hands if you love history and let's learn about it. Now, I want to start off with showing you Mystery of History. I chose to do this one first because for me, I think this was one of the more difficult curriculums to understand at the very beginning. Um, I think some are a little bit more obvious how they work <laughs> from day one, from when you first open the box. This one was a little bit more difficult just for me. Um, so I wanted to show how this works, kind of what are some of the perks and benefits. It, there's two parts to it. Mystery of History is a four volume series. So it's following the history system of, you have one volume for each of four periods in history, and then it covers world history within that period. So we're gonna be looking at volume three. Each of the volumes comes with a student reader and a companion guide. I think most recently, I've mostly been seeing the companion guides available as PDFs. I, I'm not, I think maybe it depends on where you buy it. This one we bought hard copy, obviously. For this mystery of history, we bought the PDF for the companion guide. Um, so this is volume three, the Renaissance, Reformation, and Growth of Nations. It is important to note that mystery of history is a definitely a Christian history program. I mean, we've got a big cross right there. Um, Bible history is incorporated with world history in the ancient times, and church history is incorporated with uh, history of, of everything else besides the church at the same time. So, um, which that can be really cool if you want to learn about church history integrated with what else was happening in the world at the time. And so you get one big reader like this. It is divided into quarters for each of the years. And this program is designed to be used with all grades from first through 12th. Now, um, the way that the student readers are written is that the most easiest reading one is for volume one, and then it gets a little bit harder for volume two, volume three, to volume four. So it does go up a little bit in maybe reading length, vocabulary difficulty from one level to another, but I would say that both volumes three and four would definitely be more comfortable reading level for upper elementary, middle, upper elementary and middle school for sure, and would, would also be appropriate to high school. Um, but by the time you're getting to level three or four, you probably want to at least have some older students or else you might be struggling a little bit. Um, so I wouldn't want to jump into these volume three and volume four if your oldest is maybe only in like third grade. I think that would be tough. So this is nicer if you have a range of students, but you do have some older ones. And then you'll have week one and lesson one. So it will be divided into lessons. I'll just show you. And we have always done this as a read aloud. So with mom, parent, sister, <laughs> reading aloud from the book to the students and discussing as you go. Now, depending on the age of your kids, you might do one lesson in a day, you might do less than one lesson in a day. I'm just trying to quick give you a glimpse so that you would know what to expect from the student reader, what it looks like. 
So this is level three. There is a good chunk of reading. There is art throughout. So we're getting a good picture at this this stage in history. There is a lot there. You learn about all sides of the world pretty much. But that is not all. If this was all there was, it might be a little bit on the dry side. But here, some of the best factors of this curriculum come when you take the time to read the companion guide, read how it's supposed to work. And so I do recommend, if you get this, take the time to sit down and read for a while. It can be a little bit intimidating, but look at all the different pieces and kind of how they work together. So, um, beef, she kind of breaks it down into steps and I'll kind of go through the steps a little bit. So every lesson, or not every lesson, but each quarter, it had that quarter summary that you can start out with. It's just an introduction to what you're learning about in this quarter. Then how you really start each section is with the what do you know pre-tests. And I'll show you what this looks like right here. So week one, quarter one, what do you know pre-test one. And I like this idea. It's kind of putting, um, building context for the kid, asking them what what have you heard about this um, period in history before? Which maybe they haven't come across any information about it in their lives so far. So maybe they're not going to know anything. But maybe they do already know some things. So it's, it's starting to introduce just a little bit of names. Build some curiosity. Build a little bit of context for where we're going in this quarter. I like the pretests. Um, then, and that's not for grading or anything, it's just for kind of setting the stage. Then you read through the lessons. Um, as far as, so that might be one lesson in a day. Probably, I think it's designed for one lesson in a day. And if you have older kids, that's going to work great. Then the next thing that you do is activities. And if it's a handicraft activity, you might actually have your child work on it while you're reading the lesson but she has suggested activities for every lesson and there's a lot of them. It would actually be really overwhelming to try to attempt activities all the time. She um, says, do not plan to do all the activities. You have no, <laughs> it is not at all necessary to do all the activities, but we can definitely say it is fun for sure when you make time for at least some of the activities. And they are divided into three age groups. And this is how this becomes age adaptable because for younger kids, roughly first through third grade, there will be some activities. For older students, fourth through eighth grade, I mean middle, let's just see, younger students, middle students, and then the middle or older or older students, there will be different suggested activities. First through third, fourth through eighth, and then older students are high schoolers. So activities for lesson one. She has a video idea for video footage of the Tower of London. Um, younger students can do, could do a Tudor rose pencil topper, so a little craft. Um, you could go on a little exploration looking into beef eaters. Here, um, the student can make a flip chart, which I think that there's a, some kind of printable about this with what the labels are supposed to be in the appendix. I remember seeing something about this. Um, they're usually for the older students. Okay, so here, older students, you can see, watch or read a version of these works of literature. Or, um, yeah, that, that was the table for the divisions of Plantagenet family, House of York, House of Lancaster, all that stuff. We're obviously getting into English royalty in this first lesson. But there's a whole whole bunch of activities you can go. And obviously, if you're, you're doing one lesson in one day and then you're moving on to the next lesson the next day, that would be a bit overwhelming unless you were letting history take over your life. But maybe picking one activity in a week or one activity in every two weeks or whatever is a good rhythm for your family can really help make this come to life. And there are a lot of cool options incorporated. Then once you get through three lessons, we have a review. Uh, take another look, review. Memory cards are a big deal in Mystery of History. All throughout the program, 
you are making a memory card after every three lessons to remember some of the big names or big events that you've learned about. You end with reviews. There are mapping exercises. This has a whole lot of stuff in it. So for somebody who wants to read a lot about history and enjoy it, this can be great. I believe, if I'm remembering right, I believe there are also like living book recommendations for that go along with specific lessons or time periods, if I'm remembering right. But we have not used those because this has felt like enough when we're doing it. All right, and next I'll give you a look into Story of the World. This is much beloved by many homeschoolers. I'm sure I'll have a lot of huge Story of the World fans watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if you are one. Um, but this is the also following a four volume series, Ancient Times, Middle Ages, Early Modern, and Modern Ages. Sorry about the glare there. Um, but these, you could just plain old read the book to your kids, read through a chapter a day or however long it is. This also takes the strategy of the earliest time period is a little bit easier reading and it gets gradually maybe a little bit longer or a little bit of a higher reading level as you go through until modern times. So that is something to be aware of that you don't necessarily wanna be like, oh, hmm, I would just rather start with learning about modern history before ancient history with young kids because then you might struggle a little bit. Um, some, now you could just read these. If you are wanting to use this as your sole history class, you probably would want to get the student sheets to go along with it. Of course, it depends on your style. If you wanna do, you know, come up with your own extensions and come up with your own kind of add-ons, um, that's also great. Or if you just wanna read the book, especially if you have really young kids, you might just read the book. But for like actual legit, history class, you will probably want some student sheets, which you can find either, you can either buy the book or you can buy it as a PDF from the Well-Trained Mind website. And so there's student sheets and there are also tests to go with it if you, and that would, the test would probably be if you're doing this with older kids or if you just want tests or if your kids like tests. I know um, I actually was kind of the kid who really liked tests. So, you know, the kid who just wants another worksheet to fill out, you got them. Um, the Story of the World worksheets, there are um, so many that you probably wouldn't do them all. So you, if you're using this, you will probably have to do a little bit of planning and prep to choose, okay, I'm gonna do these sheets or I'm gonna do this test and so forth as you use this. But um, what makes this a little bit different from Mystery of History, or quite a bit different, is that it really is written as if history were a story, kind of an ongoing story. So that's kind of the big selling point of Story of the World, is the story style writing of nonfiction. So that makes it pretty unique. Now, sunlight. Um, I should just warn you, we are kind of fans, and if you happen to fall in love with sunlight, you too might end up with a homeschooling room looking kind of like this. <laughs> um, but sunlight integrates history with Bible and literature through their cores, and they use a lot of books. Now, the history portion is typically um, one spine or a series of spines that you go through throughout the year but then also smaller books, and then liter literature books will be connected to the time period that you're learning about. So, perks of Sunlight are you get to read a lot of books, and if you love spending a lot of time on reading, that is a definite perk. Sunlight is a curriculum with a biblical worldview. There's Bible integrated in all the cores through actually just reading the Bible and also reading some devotionals or educational faith-related books but I should mention that most of the um, history core books would just be mainstream secular books. So they aren't the kind of Christian curriculum where every single thing is written with a Christian slant or perspective on everything. And that is actually something I appreciate because we can have a biblical worldview even as we're reading things or appreciating um, literature or anything that wasn't written by people who share my faith. I can still appreciate it, I can still learn from it um, while holding on to my worldview. So this is just an example of one book and this is something that 
you might during the course of a sonnet year just go through page by page um, but then it will be associated with so this is 20th century I think this is 20th century history that that particular core um, one good thing to note about sunlight is they have a lot of different options of cores. I think they have more cores than you could do if you went kindergarten through 12th grade. <laughs> um, so you can choose a little bit, pick and choose. They have American history. They have, um, I believe this one is church history. I'd have to look a little bit. No, this is not, this is definitely not church history. <laughs> Maybe this one is the church history year. I know they have one church history year and we don't have them labeled by topic. This is one of the American history years. This is what my sister is doing right now. So it's missing some of the books here. Um, but we have different years. We've got world history. You can look on their website and see all the different types of focuses that they have. But I do really appreciate the variety of different history focuses that they have, the different levels, and all the great books. And I wanted to show you Abeka history as well. Abeka is a Christian school curriculum that is also available for homeschoolers to purchase and use. This is a sixth grade textbook. They have every year, um, I think from first grade to 12th grade, history or history and ge geography options to go through. Um, you can see our method of being able to use the same textbook from one kid to another. Um, and this is going to look more like a traditional school type of curriculum, type of history. There is a lot less prep, definitely less prep than mystery of history. There, you're not going to be spending as much time as on reading as you would with sunlight, less prep than story of the world. Now, um, from the homeschoolers perspective, I would say it is harder to get excited about. <laughs> And I, I, I think that's a, you know, there's a lot of homeschoolers who have used Abeka all the way through very successfully. I'm trying to find the beginning of a chapter. <laughs> um, who have used Abeka very successfully and who have liked it. There are also people who run at the sight of a textbook. So, you know, in homeschool, we have every side of the spectrum. A couple, so it is a very traditional textbook. It comes with like quizzes and map worksheets and a test book. And you can also get teacher's guides with the answers to every question that's in the text. So here for the little comprehension checks, every question that's in the tests and the quizzes. So that makes life um, easy for you as a teacher. And to me, that, that's a good thing to point out that some years you kind of need easy. Maybe something's crazy going on in your life right now. We actually primarily used Abeka when my family was transitioning from living in the USA to living in Southeast Asia. And my mom was transitioning from being stay at home to working, <laughs> a working mom. So Abeka can be good when maybe you don't have time to put in all the lesson planning time and all the activity time that you need. You just need a book that you can hand to your kid that's at their grade level that they can read and then you have a teacher's guide that can tell you if they're getting the answers right. So I do find that Rebecca is easier for the teacher to teach. Um, some things to be a little bit just notice and be aware of is that most of the Rebecca years are focused on US history. So I think grades one through six maybe, all of them are USA or New World history and only after sixth grade, if I'm remembering right, then you start getting into old world history or world history in general. So that might be a little too much, that might be okay. If you're not doing it straight through, you know, from first through sixth grade, to me, I feel like it would get a little bit boring learning about the same history year after year, um, because, you know, we only have a couple hundred years of history here in the USA. Um, so that, that is just something to consider that this is more US focused. Um, this is uh, all the textbooks are written for Christian schools. So they'll incorporate Bible verses. They'll incorporate a Christian um, perspective on everything. We have chapter reviews and checkups. The 
chapter reviews are very much the same content that you'll see on the test. So um, review, it helps your child review for the test and be very prepared to do well. So this is a very classic option and I think it's, it's solid for when you need something easier. When mom does not need to spend time on prepping history or on reading books for hours. Because once you get probably first, second, third grade, I would still be reading the textbook to the child. But once you get into fourth grade, this is really something you could just hand to your kid and they can read it, they can take, they can answer the questions and you just check it for comprehension and talk with them about it. Now, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to history curriculum. Everyone's gonna have their own passions, their own interests, and their own seasons with what history they're gonna use in their family right now. Um, our family doesn't live in the US, so sometimes you know, we don't necessarily wanna study US history again. We might wanna study the history of the location where we live, or we, we wanna study the history of just one particular subject that a particular kid is interested in. There are so many great ways to do history. I just wanted to show you four um, options that our family has used in different seasons and with different kids and for different purposes and all of them work. You don't have to stress out about finding the perfect curriculum that you can stick with all the way through because realistically, you're probably not gonna do that. <laughs> Um, but I hope that this is a helpful resource for you if you're looking for a history curriculum and if you're not looking for a history curriculum then you're probably just you know having fun watching YouTube and having imaginary homeschool curriculum chats with me and that's okay too. Alright, see you later. Bye!